My name is Shane Redding. Uh, I'm chairing this panel session. We've got a great panel, I'm delighted to say. My role today is I'm here with one of my many hats uh, and I am a non-executive director of a company called Lead Forensics. You'll hear a little bit more later on, but basically they provide lead tracking. So um, to introduce the panel, I'm going to start off by introducing Ross Fobin, who's CEO of Response Tap. You're supposed to wave. Well done, Ross. Um, and basically, Response Tap are the leader in voice technology, allowing you to improve your marketing ROI with call tracking and analytics. So I'm sure he's going to have some great points on that. Next on the panel, we have Tom Byrne from Periscopics. Thank you, Tom. Um, apparently, Periscope is our geeky, data-oriented, paid search company with display and analytics specialisms as well. So, great insights coming there. Next along, we've got Liz on the end. So, Liz Smith from Marketing Director of Marketo. Marketo provides easy-to-use, powerful and complete marketing software, helping companies turn marketing from a cost center into a revenue driver, so bang on topic for, for Marketo. And then lastly, but not least, we've got um, Billy Lyle from Target 360. And Target 360 combines the power of CRM and marketing automation in one solution to provide better qualified leads. Not sales pitches at all, but really good expert opinions. Um, this topic came about because actually in a recent report um, from Marketing Sherpa, and if you're not familiar with Marketing Sherpa, I'd recommend it to all of you. Really good website, loads of case studies, which showed that B2B marketers are focusing more on producing and customizing reports than they are actually in actioning the insights they're getting from them. So my first question to the panel is, well, why? Why are we doing that? Why are we producing these reports and not actually action them? So maybe Tom, to kick this one off? Yeah, sure. Um, why are people producing reports and not actioning them? Well, generally, people don't really, well, the, the perception that we have is that I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a, a search perspective, um, that search is generally misunderstood from a sea level. And so therefore, when information is pushed down to, to understand the interaction of traffic on site, it's coming without a full breadth of understanding of the implication of the traffic. Therefore, people are producing reports based on the guidance they're given, which empirically is going to mean that they're unactionable. Okay. Anybody else want to comment? I, I think it's... It becomes very easy when you've got a lot of data to start pulling these reports together and you can't just get carried away with actually having too much data at your fingertips. You're, you've got to remember and only report on the key aspects that you're really interested in and that are going to deliver great value back to the customer. And I think that's what happens. You spend a lot of time in reports that don't end up actually having value off the back of them and they end up... Hey everyone, I think my perspective on this is that um, marketing are generating so much reports because they have to. And marketing is being asked to be a lot more accountable than they have been in the past. And the CEO, the CFO, the board, they're all asking, you know, if marketing spent X pounds, X dollars on, on these initiatives, what return have I gotten from them? Um, and I think it's, it's back to, to the point Billy made that, you know, th there's a lot of data out there, so you have to prioritize on what you're reporting. And um, I think a lot of people are maybe spinning cycles and reporting on things that, may, that the company and the business may not value, like how many attendees somebody had at a webinar um, or how many scans they did at a trade show like this. But what the company really cares about are you know, revenue and bottom line impact. Yeah, I think the, the main problem with the, uh, the driver for reports is actually all the different technologies that exist, so, um, and also the particularly the, the different channels. So everyone is going out and saying, you know, we've got social and, and SEO and pay-per-click, and how do we do reports across all of them? Um, really, you need to figure out what is the main important thing for each channel, and then get a, a metric that you can track or several metrics potentially that you can track against that uh, and really benchmark against your performance over time. I saw some really interesting comments there. I, I'd like to ask the audience actually, who, who feels, who empathises with this that you perhaps spend too much time, stick your hands up, if you feel you spend too much time producing reports that are not adding value to the business, they're not driving revenue, stick your hands up, go on. 
okay, not not so many. Perhaps you know the rest of you clearly doing a good job and that you're concentrating on the right things. So, uh, another question for you in the room: Who here would describe themselves as um, in B two B markets as a? Okay, so the, the majority. All right, and I think that helps the panel answer some of the questions that are to come. In, in the next question I've got for the panel, it's um, really for the, everybody in the room, what can we do to change the perception of marketing um, from being a cost centre, back to one of the points that was made, um, to being a revenue driver? Um, perhaps Liz, you could take this one first. Thank you. So I think the biggest thing that we can do is help to build marketing's credibility. And when I say that, it's, it's not reporting on what, what we call the vanity metrics, uh, but reporting on the, the real tangible impact. So if we invested, you know, X pounds in, in TFM and what the outcome of that will be. And I think once you start to understand what kind of return you're getting from your various programs and how that has your historic performance, you can then start to project that over the future. And you can say, okay, um, if I have a big trade show in April and I have a webinar in May, you know the kind of return you're going to get from that and you can start to predict and forecast it. And then you can go to the board meeting and you can go to the executive management level, the same way the sales director has been doing for many, many years, um, with credibility and say, it's not what marketing has spent, this is what we're going to deliver to the business in this quarter, in this month, in this year. And I think it's all about building the credibility to, to have those conversations. <clears throat> I think the other key area there is, is actually how you engage with the sales team. You, know, you build a lot of credibility by providing them the information that you can now gather about prospects whilst they're going through the journey. So that if, as you pass all that across to the sales team, the sales team know and you can't end up having that discussion around about they're not well enough qualified, they, you know, they don't know what they're doing. You, know, you pass all that information across and, and sales will start to appreciate it and they'll actually look for more leads because you know, who doesn't want an easier job, you know, a, a, a warmer prospect? Uh, I would agree with, with Billy with that. I think the main thing on top of that is actually reporting, um, which goes really against what we're talking about here, but it's actually tying the, the, the initial work that the, you're doing in marketing through to the ROI that it's generating. And if you can really start using uh, marketing automation platforms, um, analytics platforms to start tracking those initial uh, entry points right the way through to the conversion, you can then start putting uh, marketing down as, as a part of the value chain as ra rather than a cost. Well, I sort of disagree. Oh, good. Actually, <laughs> um, I think that there are only two profit centers in a business. One is marketing and one is innovation. And so everything else really is cost. Sales is cost, fulfillment's cost, everything else is cost. Because if you innovate, you create a purpose for people to buy your product or service. Marketing is a critical way to distribute that message. So historically, marketing was at sea level and it's just got pushed down. So really, everything else is a cost center except for marketing. The, the real advantage now is that back in the, well, historically, if you look at all channels, you had to make an inferred assumption based on the value of your marketing. Whereas as more and more we move online, you don't have to make inferred assumptions. You've got clean data from traffic acquisition through to convertible events, and if you use Marketo or any other CRM system that, that can pull your digital data through and reconcile on the va actual value attribution, you can prove that, that marketing is a profit center. You don't have to make any assumptions. You don't have to report. You don't have to do anything because you've got a linear relationship from we spent the money here on marketing, the money is yielded here. As long as you've got clean tracking all the way through, you prove that you're a profit center. The innovation bit's a bit harder. I'm going to pick you up on that last point because I think that's a, that's a really controversial and very good view as well. I think sales might argue about being a cost center. But in terms of that tracking, because I know, you know one of the questions that always comes up is that, well, that's great in theory, but how do you do it? So in terms of the tracking, you know, what are the things that you can put in place that allow you to do it? Any tips from the panel? don't know who wants to take that one next. Yeah, tracking, I mean, over the last couple of years, tracking has become so much easier. Um, your key elements that you need to be able to do through here are 
associate your leads to campaigns. So you you need some software that's going to be able to associate and give you some sort of unique URL or tracking code that's going to take you know, any website visit that you get and associate it to campaigns within your business so you can start to report on that. Off the back of that, you need to make sure that that happens for all individual visits, you know, for any visitor, so you can actually start to attribute across many campaigns to see if the campaigns build up, and it's maybe three or four campaigns that you need to allocate it across, so it's maybe TMFA and your PPC and your calls that are making the difference. You know, off the back of that, you then need to make sure you get your sales information in there. So you either need to make sure you get really good and tight integration to your CRM system or actually look for systems that will allow you to maintain and, and manage the sales process right up to the sale within that whole market environment. Then you can actually write your reports off the back of that and, and get a very clear picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I pretty much agree with that, that you, know, you have the opportunity now to track um, and monitor engagement and activity at all kinds of level. So, first of all, if, if someone who's engaging with you has the right demographic fit, so in the right industry, they have the right job title, etc., you can then um, score them accordingly and, and track to see what pages they're visiting and what kind of content they're downloading, um, what their activity is on social, um, what events they're going to, and you know, uh, as Billy rightly said, you know, tracking that all the way through from lead creation all the way through to opportunity close and being able to show that to the executive team um, is really, really powerful, and, and not to, you know, I think there's a little bit of sales bashing, <laughs> not to do any more of that, but historically sales teams haven't been terribly good at attaching um, people to opportunities and being able to tie that back to campaigns. So if you can do that on the marketing side of things and see all of the interactions across, um, across the sales cycle, because we all know as marketers that it's never one single touch that turns a, a cold sales lead into a deal. Um, it's usual, usually multiple touches and multiple people. Um, so being able to track it across the entire company at not just the individual level is also pretty important as well. Um, I'm just going to, just before we answer the next one, I'm just going to ask um, from the floor, I think we've got a roving mic somewhere, hopefully. Is anybody struggling with this particular area in terms of making their marketing measurable? And, and this point particularly about how you track, does anybody have a question that they want to put to the panel on this area? Um, or are you all still? It's down the front. Okay, thank you very much. No, 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 there's, another, there's one coming, Tom, otherwise we'll lose our... Yeah, so um, if you've got a, a very long purchase life cycle where you're contacting people a number of times over that cycle, how do you um, attribute the sale to any one of those communications, whereas actually it's probably relevant to almost all of them, but you just can't pin it on one? For those of you who didn't hear at the back, because it was just slightly quiet, um, it's a real problem in business to business. If you've got a really long sales cycle, how do you track it through that whole process? Because in some cases in B2B, it might be two years, for example. So um, yeah, I think that's it's a really good question and one that lots of people are struggling with. So we're back to the panel to, to pick that one up. Hi. Um, great question. And I think it is about managing it and within a mixture of marketing automation and CRM so that you know every single touch point and your, your sales guys, whichever ways you're, you're keeping in touch, are all logged against that lead that initially came in and you're tracking all your campaigns as you come through there. Um, actually manage to model the attribution across of it of all your different campaigns can become a bit more difficult. That's where you're, you need to make an internal judgment call in, in the, the company. Do you just go with your, your first you know, how did the lead come into the business or actually you know, start to split, split a percentage across because you know, if you go last touch it's typically going to be a sales call as well you need, to, you need to actually work on an attribution model across all your campaigns so you can track it with the systems then you need to actually do a bit of analysis yourself into right you know, the average sale goes through all these different steps and these, you know, and, and experiment with taking some steps out you know, and, and see how much importance comes across them I echo that and I think it's really important to figure out internally whether you want to do first touch attribution, last touch attribution or what we call multi-touch attribution. Um, and I showed a slide earlier in a presentation that 
showed a, a whole bunch of social media campaigns that have been executed and the pipeline that had been generated from a first touch attribution where um, that touch got the entire pipeline credit for the opportunity and then from a multi-touch perspective where it got an equal portion of all of the marketing touches for that opportunity and what's interesting to see is that you know there are some campaigns that are really good at that first touch and there are other campaigns that are really good at the multi-touch and that tells you that the ones that are really good on the multi-touch are kind of more the nurturing kind of campaigns. The people are responding to that as they're engaging with you and progressing down the sales cycle. So it's really valuable to be able to do, you know, to do the analysis and do the reporting at both a full first touch, multi-touch, or or a last touch. Um, it, it's an important differentiator. And I, I'm just going to add to that point because I think there's also a big difference between anonymous tracking, i.e. you know you know that they've, they've come there and you can see your metrics, but you still don't know who they are. And I think for me, one of the exciting things that there are now tools out there, and I think you know the panel have got a variety of tools that you've brought to have a look at, but you can now actually identify these anonymous website visitors that you don't know who they are. So tools like Lead Forensics and there are others on the panel that actually allow you to understand people who haven't filled anything in but you still know who they are because actually you can't attribute unless you know who your visitor is and that, that's the absolute key because otherwise you're, you're tracking success of a campaign but not down to the individual lead. So Tom, I don't know whether you've got a comment on that as well. Well, I'm sure everyone's familiar that you, Google Analytics has, has made a, a significant change last year enabling you to upgrade to Universal Analytics and that has a, a big shift in the way that they essentially log users. One of the reasons they've done this is so, that, so they can do cross-device tracking. But when you pull that into an organ, when you pull that through the website and enable, integrate with a CRM system, it enables you to do well to visualise multi-channel funnels much much better. It doesn't really matter how long the sales cycle is, as long as you're able to attribute each contact point to an individual, you'll find you'll tend to find that different USPs of the business are likely to, to yield different attribution modelling. I wouldn't encourage first or last click attribution, I would almost always encourage a multi-touch attribution model because you can look at the, the value attribution based on the different types of business that you're going to get. Um, I think Response Tap as a telephone tracking solution is awesome because one of the big gaps from a digital point of view was that, that offline where you get a much more of a personal engagement through a sales, salesperson. That was always a, a sort of misnomer. You lost that, but by using a telephone tracking solution that records calls and then you can append that to the CRM system, it means you can look at what what factors are impacting the conversion rate. And the quality of the salespeople is a big one, and it's always overlooked that you've got a really poor salesperson that's going to skew all of your attribution modelling. So being able to understand how the salesperson is interacting with each of the leads means you can you can look at the value attribution of the lead and then you can look at the conversion rate. And when you've got a long sales cycle, that just becomes more problematic because there's more contact with salespeople and they're risky That's from a point marketeer's on. point of view. Yeah. Billy, I know that you, you, in terms of technology, have got some, some within the CRM, so um, it would be good to sort of pick up some of the ideas um, that can develop on that because I think that point's very key is that, you know, depending on what you're looking to measure, is it online, is it offline, um, different technology comes into play. So, yeah. so within the CRM system, you're, it, it is a, a critical part to be able to track every interaction from the sales teams. And you're, when you're measuring your attribution, potentially you're, it's worth looking at it on from a marketing side of view, point of view on the opportunities that were raised. And then you can actually start to look at you know, how are sales interacting with those opportunities. You know, so, and it potentially takes out some of the or, or highlights if you have got problems in certain salespeople you know, and on working on certain campaigns for you. you know, and be it whether the system is a separate marketing automation system integrated with CRM, you know, it just needs to be tight integration at that point in time to make sure that you can log calls, your know, webinars, any you know, event attendance you know, and run across every single touch point within you know, your one system or the combination of integrated systems. It's a good time to, to perhaps take um, another question from the floor. Is there anybody else who's got a, a burning question that they'd like to put to the panel? Yeah, great. So the hand has gone up. Yeah, so up until now we've been talking about like the direct revenue that comes from like a delegate or a subscription cell. Um, 
Do you think we should also include the, the indirect stuff from like uh, digital print advertising sponsorship and if so, how's best to do that? Oh, attributing indirect revenue, that's a nice difficult question. Who's going to take that one? <laughs> well, coming back to the first question and also answering your question in a way, I think it really comes down to integrated technology as well as discipline within the team. So you need to have a team that is willing to, in, in that specific case, understand, ask the questions um, of the customers and then say, okay, where did you come from? How did you find us? And then actually import that into a CRM system and have a system that's actually capable of, of tracking those multi-touch points and then coming back and being able to analyze that. Um, there's no real magic tools to be able to do that. Um, but I, I think that discipline is key and it's, it's probably one of the most difficult parts of, of of this sort of tracking is being able to, um, I mean, if things happen digitally online, you can track that for the most part. As um, soon as someone goes offline, there, is, there are elements where you just have to, to rely on, on your team to be able to, and, and trust your team to be able to take that information and enter it accurately within whatever system you're using. And at this point about training staffs come up a number of times and I can't emphasise how important it is. If, if they don't know how they're supposed to attribute it, you know, they're not going to get it into the systems and it's a bit that is often missed in terms of training and particularly you mentioned indirect revenue. Often that's for key account teams. They're the ones who are cross-selling and they're the ones who really need to sit down and explain, well, these are the questions you need to ask to understand where you, so you can actually attribute it properly. So, Tommy, you know. Um, in terms of the sponsorship piece, just answering that question directly, we've done, a, a, a search is a very useful tool because it essentially, as long as it's a clean filter, it tells you what people are interested in and, and how they're engaging with the internet. Because it's so fluid, the big problem that people often have is that if you fill your campaign with any of the, the more liberated match types, like broad match, broad match modified, you end up sampling or sessioning your own data. Whereas if you've got an exact match campaign, you're getting clean data. And because Google has moved to enhanced campaigns, they're putting a greater degree of focus on dimensional segmentation. And what that enables you to do is use external variables like time, geography, using remarketing for search, how someone's interacted with your site in the past, in order to start targeting particular activities that tend to be particularly with sponsorship geographically or based around people looking at a specific thing, which might be channel or a, an event like this. And it enables you to start appending certain tags to how people come through based on key indicators of they made a search from this particular venue, for example. And it's not foolproof, but as a KPI system, you tend to be able to, to map and trend the data. And Google have done quite a lot of work on this, um, particularly looking at the, the ROPA effect, the research online purchase offline. And so you can use standard KPIs and metrics to infer some sort of performance of the offline capability. And then it, it, it is a blended approach, but assuming your data, particularly your search data, is clean, which very rarely it is, you can use that because it's so much more fluid than any of the other variables, and it's absolutely representative of what people care about. It's not what I care about because it's a pool sales technique. It's what they care about, and I'm just pulling them through to me. So, some really good points again there, but this all sounds great in theory. Liz, why does this just sometimes all go wrong? Why doesn't it work? It sounds, you know, it sounds easy. So why isn't, why isn't it happening? Specifically the, the credit? And yeah, the, the attribution, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think it it's probably goes back to, to discipline and people not having the processes in place. Uh, I mean, e each company does it differently, and I think there's a recognition, um, at least for us, I'll, I'll share with you how we do it, um, and this is also similar to what's happened to previous companies that I've worked for, is that we recognize that there are probably three or four, maybe five contributors to, to pipeline. And, and for us, it's marketing is one, sales directly is, is another word, partners, um, and, and maybe some band of, of uh, some kind of outbound uh, calling team, etc. So at a high level, you, you can track that. So if if marketing, for example, suspects that you know this opportunity that is tagged as a sales outbound opportunity did actually have s some touches for marketing, if you have the tools in place to, to track that activity that we've been talking about, um, you can you can then show that using you know all of the touches and tagging the people that you want to include and say right these are all of the things that impacted that that deal why is it hard because um well 
we haven't done ourselves any favors as marketers. We've, we've talked a lot about um, uh, program performance and how good a program was in terms of the names scanned at a trade show. But what we haven't done a really good job of is showing how we're impacting revenue and pipeline. Okay. Um, and I think it's, it's kind of a DNA shift for marketers to, to start thinking about that. It's not about web traffic. It's not about hits. It's about the, the pipeline. It's about the revenue. Yeah. Okay. We've got a couple of minutes left. I'm very keen to take some more questions from the floor. If anybody's sitting there with a, a burning question, this is your, your chance to ask it. So uh, does anybody want to stick their hand up and ask a question to the panel? No? Oh, we're doing well on answering all the questions. Um, what I'm going to say is that, that just in this sort of closing session, I'm going to go along and ask basically back to the topic again, you know, actually in terms of driving revenue, what is the single top tip? Now, um, the panellists have kind of, kindly actually prepared some extra resources. We're, we're very conscious with sessions like this. You've only got half an hour. There's only so much information that you can take in and we can share with you. But I would recommend all these resources. Um, download them. Great white papers. Most of the companies on the panel, they've got a stand. So go and have a chat to them as well. But going along um, the panel, actually asking your top tip, if you want to actually start driving revenue, what's the one thing in terms of, of the analytics and things that people should be can leave this room and they can do tomorrow? So I don't know who wants to go first. Um, I'll go first. Um, make sure your data is clean in almost, I, I review campaigns all the time in terms of search campaigns, and the data is never clean. So get clean data out of search. The second thing is, salespeople lie. They will take the, the credit. If they get a lead, and it, you cannot prove that it's come from marketing, it's their outbound sales activity. So as much as possible, taking all tracking away from salespeople will improve the integrity of your tracking. And <laughs> well, that, that's really that's it. And, that's then, your one. <laughs> and then actually use the data. So make sure you're, you know the right questions to be asking. I'm sure the people above you do not know the right questions to be asking. So asking the right questions and interpreting the data to ensure that you have a net contribution to the business, then it's very simple. Clean data, analysis, do what works, do less of what doesn't work. Excellent. I think uh, you've got to find the, <laughs> the metric that works for your business. Um, it, there, there will only be a few of them. Um, the number of searches, the number of visitors, the number of tweets or likes or, or all of that stuff, uh, it's all fluff really. Um, what actually drives revenue? Find out what, what the metrics are that, that tell you where your revenue is coming from and focus on those. Uh, you don't need to have hundreds. Um, I mean, all the tools out there will give you hundreds, but in most cases, there's two or three that actually have the impact that you need. In amongst all this, I think you've got to remember the customer. Ultimately, we're getting all that data in. It's understand the customer better and give them what they're looking for. Give them the resources that they want and make sure that you're, you're getting the message across them about your product. You know, and, and you know, it's all great analyzing exactly what we're doing, but making sure that your message is right with your customer and using some of this analytics to really prove and ensure that you can connect with them. I think that point, i just add to that, make it easy. I, I get so frustrated when so many companies, it's clear, they want to collect loads and loads of data. But boy, do they make it difficult, particularly if I've already given them my data. To ask for it again is an insult. And I think that point is, is so valid. You know, it's this valuable stuff that we're collecting and treat it like that's really important. And Liz? I think my point is to recognize that different programs perform differently and to be able to, to measure various things across different types of programs. For example, inbound marketing for us is phenomenal, it works really, really well, but we don't put all our eggs in that basket. We spread it, we do like 25 different kinds of programs. Um, and when you compare, thing, when you compare them on, on different, different metrics levels, for example, a cost per prospect um, or a pipe to spend, which are probably our two favorite metrics, they perform differently. But a PPC lead, for example, might be really expensive for us on a cost per prospect basis, but it's really fast. It goes through the sales cycle really, really fast, and that's worth an awful lot to us as well. So the two metrics that I think I would look at um, are cost per prospect and ultimately pipe to spend. So what is the pipe that you're getting for, for, every, um, for every pound that, that you're investing? 
I think we've had some really great advice. Um, I hope you'll all join me in thanking the panel for doing a really good job. I hope they'll hang around. You might have individual questions you'd like to come up and ask them at the end. Do visit the stands. Do make a note of those. But thank you all to the panellists. Thank you very much.